March 2020 has seen God's obedient children step into an unprecedented season of blessing. I've decided to capture some of those and share them here. If you have an awesome testimony that you think is worth sharing, be sure to email it to me. Details are in the detail box below this video. These testimonies are anonymised to protect the privacy of all involved. Guys, I'm really excited to be sharing this testimony from a viewer because I believe that it is classic of the turnarounds and the unbelievable blessings that God is pouring out on those who have been obedient in this past season. Join me for a testimony that is absolutely incredible. It is bound to fill your heart with joyful expectation for the goodness that God has planned in your own life. Anne emailed me on the 6th of January in 2020. She said, Hello, I am in urgent and extreme need of prayer. My sister and I were rescued out of homelessness back in July 2019. We have been staying with a stranger ever since, and God has provisioned us and kept us the entire time. Today, January 3, was our day to leave this property because the landlords no longer wanted us to be staying here. My sister and I waited all day for a miracle and are still believing God knows the best way to lead us forward. We stepped out in faith and left the property, believing that God would not cause us to go back to something he already delivered us out of months ago. As the day ended, however, my sister and I started to doubt because God didn't come as we had thought. We even tried going back to where we used to stay on the street, but we felt no peace there and still didn't feel like that was the right answer. As of now, we don't know what to do, where to go and have very limited resources. I don't feel like I'm meant to go back to being homeless, but I also know I can't keep on living where I used to with this stranger. If you feel led to share anything at all from the Lord, I myself am praying to hear and would greatly appreciate some clarity in this present moment. Thank you and God bless. I said I will pray and I received a word and... Anne has given me permission to share the prophetic words that Holy Spirit shared to her through me. Dear sister, the blessed and meek will inherit the earth as it says in my scriptures. For I know you follow the Lord wherever he goes. Be willing to stand under the waterfall. Purity is yours everlasting. If I give you a bit of peace, I know you can take my peace and multiply it. And I said, I sense you taking God's message to the masses. Holy Spirit says, do not be impatient. These things cannot be rushed. I am your saviour and I will protect you. But some hardship is your preparation in readiness for things to come. For I am doing a new thing. Expect the earth to shake and tremble. And it is this I make you ready for. I prepare you in readiness for affliction that is to surround you like a flood. And your light will shine around you, picking out those ready for harvest. Provision is available. But my queens must remain humble at this moment. Subterfuge. For if I reveal my hand too soon by clothing you in blessings and abundance, my plans and your destiny will be thrown into the fire for eternity. So patience wins the race. Affliction is part of the order of things, the process to bring my people to their knees until they cry out for their one true God. And you, my sweet girl, will be there in their midst to switch the light on and bring in the nets. A harvest is decreed and has been made ready in heavenly realms. You are a seamstress worthy of honour and recognition. I give apples as sustenance. Do not walk alone, but surround yourself with, the, with godly people. For the harvest is right around the corner, and it will bring discomfort to the multitudes. You are my blessing to the people of the region you reside in. After this period or event, I can willingly forecast an upturn in life events and fortune for you. In this time, though, it is important you stay in divine alignment and bring yourself before my throne in supplication. For every good gift is yours, all in good time. For my timing is perfect. I love you with a tenderness, and that is the very reason I hold back on promises until the last minute. Have faith. Speak faith. For I am not a man that I should lie. 
Anne replied, Thank you very much for this word. It has brought me peace. All I want is to obey the Lord and be in his perfect will. I believe for now he wishes for us to stay where we are, which is still with this stranger. We were able to come back last night and were received with open arms, which is a blessing because my sister has fallen sick. I don't know if the Lord will have us leave in the days to come. And of course, I don't know where we'll go, but I trust God will work everything out. I replied, God bless you. It sounds like you were sensitive to his will and obedient. And replied on the 14th of January, I just wanted to update you and let you know that God came through for me and my sister. We are now staying with an elderly woman who needs care. It is definitely out of our depth and we are fighting colds ourselves, but God made sure we didn't have to return to the streets. Please pray for our strength in this time as we are physically exhausted and not trained as nurses or professional caretakers. Please pray that God will grant this elderly woman rest so we might receive rest also. I replied, you are qualified through Jesus. You will know just what to do. He is blessing you to bless others. Thank you for the update, sister. God bless you. I will continue to pray for your circumstances. It is a year of blessings for many, but we have a transition to go through first. On 17th of January, Anne wrote to me again. Hello Rachel, I'm sorry to email late but I'm soliciting your prayers because the current situation my sister and I are in is truly unfavourable. I mentioned that God has sent us to an elderly woman and to say things have been chaotic is a severe understatement. This woman is in massive debt, is terminally ill and the bank is looking to close her home in a matter of weeks. She is estranged from her family but in an effort to garner support for her plight we contacted a brother that she spoke fondly of. Long story short, none of her family members are willing to help her, and my sister and I are only 22 and 26 years old, with no money and no home ourselves. I am truly at a loss and don't know how to help this woman. I am trusting and relying on God, and believe he will make sure this woman ends up somewhere safe and well taken care of. Never in my life have I encountered such a wild situation, and none of the woman's sisters are even willing to speak with us, because they don't feel that anything is our business. All I know is my sister and I have been working day and night trying to keep this woman cleaned, fed and comfortable. But when it comes to the matter of her home, it is not in our hands, but God's. I don't know what to do or where we're even going to end up, but I know God will take care of us. I would appreciate your prayers at this time, as this is a real pressing and tough situation. I believe God sent us here to take good care of her, but we could really use a strategy or some direction in how to move forward. I said, as I read read this, I have a sense that sowing into the home will bring a blessing regarding accommodation, i.e. as you put effort into care of the house, that will open up favour. So at this stage, do some house cleaning and maintenance if you are able and have faith that God will provide. I will listen for a word for you as I sense Holy Spirit is telling me there is a breakthrough in this situation. In the meantime, let's pray for deliverance, protection and provision and guidance. On the 17th of January, Anne wrote again, Hello Rachel, thank you for your reply. It's funny that you mentioned cleaning the house because that's exactly what we've been doing for the past several days. She's lived in this home for 51 years, so as you can imagine, there's a lot to go through, but we're doing our best day by day. My sister and I both believed in coming here that a breakthrough would find us. It's a long story, but basically my sister and I have been called to the entertainment industry by God. Anne goes on to list Miss G's credentials in the entertainment industry. She says, I say all this to say, my sister and I knew immediately this was not a random door or a connection and that God was leading us forward just like he promised. It has come with its challenges, but I know God is with us and will protect us all. Already there's been a huge breakthrough tonight. While I was emailing you, my sister managed to convince this woman to go to a nursing home. I prayed and felt that God was telling us this is where she needs to be, to have the proper care. However, this seemed impossible because the woman was adamant about not wanting to go to an assisted living facility. All that has now changed and we're now looking for nice places that she can afford to go to before her house sells. So, God is definitely working all things out and I look forward to seeing this woman happy and safe because this has all been very stressful for all of us. Again, thank you for your time and prayers. I so appreciate you. I replied, oh gosh, that is good news. It is kind of nice that you have something tangible to do when so often all we can do is pray. And there is great power in prayer, but often we yearn to be busy in the wait. This certainly does sound like God's work. So glad your sister is with you for this journey and God bless you. May God keep you and secure your futures as keystones in his grand plan. At this point, 
I received a personal prophetic word for Anne, which I will share here. Hello girls, it's me, your Holy Father, your Redeemer, your Saviour. I want to say that I'm very proud because I'm watching on as you do this good thing in my name. I can see that you do this with a big heart, with an open heart, willing to receive my guidance and my blessings. I wouldn't be willing to see you flounder, penniless and without resources. So I say to you, take time to be sensitive to my leading. Notice the smallest sensation that might be an indication that I am talking to you, that I am pointing you in a specific direction at a specific time to a, dis- to a specific place for it is in this way that I can most often bless my children have your minds wide open to the abundant opportunities and ways that I can bless you dear children don't restrict the ways I can bring gifts to your door For there are ways that I can work that have not crossed your mind. I love you my dear children and it pleases me that you are taking care of my child in her time of need. It is a warehouse of blessings that I now open the door to and you will see that I have every good gift in the storehouse for you with your name written clearly on it. It won't miss its mark. You will be coming in to blessings, mark my word. But all my children do travel a rough road. The narrow road can be winding. There can be misperceptions. The enemy is cunning, so be careful that the things you put your hand up for are truly from me. For my blessings, my favour, come with divine alignment. So ideally you would be guided by Holy Ghost, guided by Holy Spirit. And remember that I am in heavenly realms advocating for your needs before the throne. As Jesus your Saviour, I am privy to the finest detail, the most minute detail about your lives and your needs. So don't worry because I know the situation that you are living under and I know every last need that you have. I might surprise you in the ways that I bring blessings and shiny things to meet your needs. Don't be reluctant to step out in obedience and don't be reluctant to put yourselves out there before those who can make decisions about your future careers. For you know that in this time I am calling out my blessed children Those children with the appropriate talents to step into the arena of media, of popular media. And I bring you, sweet child, I bring you into the music industry. And I know this surprises you. I hope you can see the big big grin on my face. But still don't assume how I will do this and how it will look. I just wanted to give you a hint of the good things that are coming. So don't be afraid to step into alignment with my will. All good things do come to you in my perfect timing. So be available to help others and understand and help them to understand that my dreams 
for your destiny are being made manifest as we speak. I really do see in your future your wishes and your dreams from in your hearts because I placed those there and I bless you with these things as a move of grace and as a move of fulfillment to extend my tent pegs for the expansion of my kingdom and you will know at the right time the right words to say the right ways to act to bring lost souls under my wings for carefully phrased messages are the most effective weapon the most effective net to bring in my lost and broken sheep into my fold so rest not on your laurels I can see the good things you are doing do have rest when you need to rest and do find my peace so that your minds are not racing all of the time but so that you can find that peace and properly rest your mind body and spirit at times it isn't easy and I know this but I am willing to bring good things to your doorstep as a package as a gifting for the notorious being of your past isn't perceptive of your future the enemy can't stand in the way of what I am doing, this new thing. The enemy cannot stand between you and the gifts that I have placed at strategic locations along your journey. So know this, I am doing a new thing. And you are among multitudes who I am connecting in a bright shining network across the globe. And so in time you will find that you will reach out and touch fingers, join hands with like-minded individuals who are doing a good deed in my name and in accordance with my will. God speed and God bless you, my children. You won't be homeless forever. I will provide I will provide a house and I will provide income and there will be blessings abundant over your lives. Rest not as I bring you into alignment with your bright destiny. Yeah, I'm visualising blessings being placed over your heads and I know it can be a tough road. Just step out in faith every day. Take it one day at a time. And um, I'm, I'm not even sure what your ages are, but early on in my walk, and even now, God would get me to walk one way around a piece of furniture instead of another. And, and in little ways like that, he would be building up my sensitivity to the leading from Holy Spirit. So just be obedient to every little sensation, every little sense of leading that you have. Um, yeah, just wow. Wow. You're on an awesome and important journey. Don't underestimate the role that you will play. And clearly, clearly these words that I've been giving lately are for you. And um, God bless you for, for looking out for this, this old lady. There are a lot of people out there who don't have anybody or effectively don't have anybody because families have rifted so far apart in this time. Okay, well, I'll let you go and God bless you. Much love. Bye.
and wrote to me, thank you so much for this encouraging and uplifting word from God. It was illuminating and gave me and my sister such peace. I know God is with us and will provide and protect. I look forward to seeing how the Lord unfolds our destiny. Again, thank you for taking out the time to speak with us. I do not take it lightly and appreciate all your efforts for Christ. Much love. I replied, you are most welcome, Anne. It is always a pleasure to support those who are willing to step into destiny in full alignment with God's plan over their lives. May God bless you and your sister and the elderly lady abundantly. On the 31st of January, I received another email from Anne. Hi again, Rachel. As I've kept you abreast of the current situation my sister and I are in, I wanted to update you about what God has done. In the last 10 days, God has not only brought in investors to purchase this elderly woman's home, but they've offered her such an amount that she can now afford to pay her debts and live securely in a lavish facility a few hours away in Palm Springs. Just two days ago, my sister and I made the drive with her and went to tour her new home, and she signed on the dotted line to make her move official. She has her new keys and everything. Truly, it has all been miraculous to see God turn her situation completely around and so quickly. It has been rather challenging at times, but I am so happy for her and at peace about where God has led us. I am confident she is going where she belongs and will receive the proper care. I will say, however, there is one thing I would solicit your prayers for. There is a woman, Tanya, that the elderly lady considers as a daughter-in-law. She comes by for about two, sometimes three days a week, but ultimately she leaves the vast majority of the work to me and my older sister. We've noticed that whenever Tanya comes around, the elderly woman turns into a completely different person. She becomes irate, curses, throws tantrums, and begins to look at me and my sister as co-conspirators, her enemies. She begins to accuse us of things we have never and would never do, and has even threatened to remove us from her home. But when Tanya leaves, she is back to normal and at peace. She is considerably more calm and trusts the voice of the Lord in us whenever she asks for our advice on a personal matter. It is evident that there are spiritual reasons for this shift in her behaviour alongside that she suffers from dementia. And overall, it makes me, my and my sister's job all the more difficult. It seems Satan wants to turn this lady against us despite our being here 24-7 and accommodating her every need and wish. But like I mentioned, it's only really like this when Tanya arrives. Things just suddenly become chaotic and it feels like we're in some strange battle of us versus Tanya. All I want is to see this woman get better. My sister and I have never asked her for anything and do not wish to receive anything from her unless, of course, it is a part of God's will. On top of that, my sister and I are now in the same situation we were in just three short weeks ago. With her moving, we have no idea where God is leading us to next. We have about 15 days to vacate her home and get everything cleaned up. I trust God has already secured a place for us and has a bigger plan. We just have to wait for it to arrive. Many around this elderly woman have tried to tempt her back to put us back on the streets, not to mention all the others who wish to see my sister and I homeless again. But we trust in God and have seen him come through for us in this way before. In the meantime, I'm just going to take the focus off my situation and finish my assignment for this lady. Anyhow, I pray all is well and blessed in your life. May God keep you and protect you always. I look forward to hearing from you whenever you have a moment. I replied, thank you for the update, beautiful woman of God. You seem to be very mature in your spiritual walk. I will most certainly pray regarding Tanya. Sounds like a deliverance scenario. Dementia is difficult, but the change is significant, as you say. I'll pray for you all and I'll listen to God for you. I'm quite busy these next few days with work, my daughter's birthday and more, but I will get to it. God bless you abundantly. God is most definitely moving big in your life in this season. I would say to be curious and expectant about how he will bless you in this situation. And I hear Holy Spirit say, and use you to bless others. Anne replied, absolutely no rush to respond to me whatsoever. I pray you enjoy your daughter's birthday and have a lovely time together. I am well and am doing my best to remain at peace. Please don't worry about getting back to me as I know everyone has their own lives and schedules. I merely wanted to tell you about what has transpired since you've been so kind to encourage and pray for me through it all. I trust all will be well in the end. Blessings to you and your family. On the 10th of February... Anne wrote, I pray all is well with you and your family. I know you've been rather busy, but I hope you've managed to rest amidst it all, as my sister and I have. We are well and will officially be out of the elderly lady's home this upcoming Thursday. All I can say is since I last spoke with you, things have taken quite a crazy and rapid turn. The elderly lady 
Miss G became more and more difficult to serve. She turned completely against my sister and I and even had what we believed to be a demonic manifestation episode wherein she attempted to throw a phone at my sister's head, cussed us out and told us to get out of her house. She almost called the cops on us and was going to lie and say we've been abusing her. She even later admitted that she knew that that was a lie. Things became so bad that we had to take her to the hospital because we could no longer manage her without it becoming dangerous for all of us. Now she's being held by the state for 30 days. They have diagnosed her with various behavioural and mental disorders on top of her other physical ailments. She's so ill, the doctors and her social worker aren't allowing her to go to the nice facility we're located for her. She has to remain in a skilled nursing home until she improves and I'm truly nervous about her reaction to all this. I fear all the stress could really damage her health. She still thinks she's moving into the place we found her because the doctors have yet to, be, to make her aware of the change of plans. On top of that, she has to lose her beloved dog because she is no longer able to bring him with her. Please pray that Miss G will be able to bear this news and make a swift recovery if it is in God's will for her to do so. Though my sister and I don't yet know where we'll be, we vowed to bring the dog with us and look after it. It's a lot, but God has been merciful and has helped us through all these sudden turns. I truly never expected things to happen this way for Miss G, but I ask that you keep her in your thoughts and prayers because she's going to need God's strength and love to make it through this. Thank you so much for always lending your ear and being so kind. I wish nothing but God's best for you. With love, Anne. I replied, I'm going to take another word for you, Anne, because if nothing else, you could use some encouragement. You have a good understanding of how God works and that will serve you well. The mental health system can be difficult to work with, as can psychiatric conditions. I'll pray over Miss G as healing is one of the ministries God is training me up to enter into. I believe God is teaching us to love the unlovable, and as with all things, this becomes possible with faith. But it also is valuable to take steps to protect yourself and set healthy boundaries. I feel that all will be well with the dog. I came close to homelessness and did not think I would find a place where I could have a dog, but by a miracle God gave us a small space that, despite high rent and small size, is wonderful for my girls and I and our dog. I will definitely take another word for you. God bless you and abundantly, Anne. My love to you and your sister. Anne wrote to me on the 10th of February. Hello, Rachel. Thank you so much for getting back to me. Miss G can be sweet one moment and totally vicious and accusatory the next. To this day, she swears my sister and I plan to starve her, which obviously can be a bit hurtful because all we ever did was work around the clock to make sure she was well fed, cleaned and looked after. I know the root of the issue is demons. There's a lot going on in her bloodline from what she's told me, plus other things she's been through in her life that have led to this. I know my sister and I are going to be okay, plus the dog. It's just a matter of God revealing where he wishes us to be next. We've bound to find, we're bound to find out soon because, as I mentioned, we are due out of this house by Thursday. Nevertheless, God has already blessed us in the midst of all the chaos. Due to the selling of Miss G's home, she acquired a decent sum of money and her power of attorney is going to pay me and my sister for all the hours we worked. A few days ago, she also took me and my sister shopping because we are in great need of just about everything. All of our belongings were taken by our parents and put into storage when they kicked us out of our apartment last April. It's a really long story, but if there's anything I've learnt since losing my home, it's that God always provides and protects. I'm certain my sister and I will never have to live in our car again. We haven't been homeless in that way since July 19th, 2019. For now, I'm just going to take care of Miss G's house and finish packing everything up. I'm sure God will guide us in the days ahead. It was lovely hearing from you. We'll talk soon. Anne. Anne wrote to me, Today we actually have to be out of the house and we currently have no plans so we're just going to see how the day goes and what God decides to do. We've tried looking at rental properties and apartments all to no avail. I'm just going to wait for God to open a door. I hope you have a lovely day. Anne wrote to me again on the 15th of February. I just thought I'd let you know that me, my sister and the dog are all safe. We're currently renting out a room in a house via Airbnb. Everything is lovely and clean and our host is very respectful and kind. We'll be here until March 14 and see where God chooses to take us next. It's funny because the person we're staying with is yet another musician. I guess the Lord really wants to stay on theme. Anyway, I truly appreciate all of your prayers and your concerns. I know you have your own life and schedule and the fact that you take out any measure of time to respond to me means a lot. I pray you have a great weekend. Much love, Anne. I replied to Anne, late 2017, God gave me a whole heap of lyrics and he said they would be put to a melody by somebody in America. If composing for lyrics with Holy Spirit's guiding is something that you would do, I'm more than happy to send you the lyrics. When I sing the lyrics, Holy Spirit gives me a melody. God blesses me.
Anne replied, wow, that sounds really interesting. God told me and my sister back in March 18 that he was calling us to music and acting, which shocked us both considering we have no experience in either field. I went to college to become a novelist. I studied creative writing and have loved writing since I was a child. Because of my background, I used to just assume I would become a songwriter. In my opinion, I can't sing, and though I've taken piano lessons before, I haven't stuck with it enough to consider myself proficient. I believe God is just going to supernaturally awaken and stir up gifts in us that we weren't even aware we had, which is pretty cool. I still have no idea what exactly I'm going to end up doing in music. The Lord has not specified as of yet. However, I'm very interested in the idea of learning how to arrange melodies and beats. I love orchestral, classical music as well, and it would be amazing to perhaps score a film or other project one day. Who knows? It's all up to God and in His timing. As I speak, my host is conducting an opera rehearsal downstairs. He's a classical musician himself and sings and plays instruments. I know all of this is God's way of confirming what he's told us. Even our new dog has a musical name. It's Arpeggio. You really can't make these things up. Anyway, I'd be delighted to, to read any lyrics if you feel comfortable. I don't know how much help I could provide considering any musical giftings I have at present are lying dormant, lol. But this is truly a journey I'm looking forward to. All I want is to finally do what God has called me to do, even though it's totally outside my comfort zone. I'd love to hear more about it if you feel led to share. Lovely to hear from you. I replied, wow, just a lot of wow. I'll send a copy of the lyrics when I turn the computer on. They will bless you regardless of where it goes. I sent Anne the lyrics. And she replied, thank you so much for entrusting me with these words given from the Holy Spirit. I can't wait to read it all. And one day, hear these songs come to life through your children. I'm actually quite close in age to your daughter, as I'm 22, but I definitely have not been gifted with a voice. Ha ha. At least not yet. Who knows? God is definitely up to some exciting things. Thanks again for sharing this with me. And yes, you're absolutely right. I think I'm finally, I think I'm finally at the point where I know no matter how late it goes, God will always show up. Though the last few years have felt like torture at times, I understand that my confidence in him would not be nearly as strong. It's definitely a journey, but I'm believing that things will truly start to improve even more for me and my sister now. And as always, I pray God will keep blessing you. Love, Anne. And on the 22nd of February, I sent Anne another personal prophetic word. I'm going to bring a harvest and you are going to be, you're going to play a pivotal role in that, dear sister, <laughs> it's funny, I'm not used to him calling people sister. I'm bringing you into the throng as you know it, and you will be willing to accept the part that I give you to play, for it is not a small part, and well wishes will want to shake your hand and congratulate you because they will see a good thing done, a good deed, a mitzvah. That's a Jewish word um, meaning a good deed, basically. I bless you, sweet child. Ask not where provisions come from because you know that it is your Holy Father who provides. And I smile upon you. My grace is abundant over your life path and your history is nothing nothing to um, nothing to despise, says Holy Spirit, for it shaped who you are and you are my dear child, you are my sweet thing. And I bring you before those people who need you. You know that this is true and these people can be very tough to get along with. They can be very tough to love. But you will be blessed in this process. I will keep you safe from harm. Know this, dear girl. But I'm also strengthening you in this hour because I will that you become... I'm trying to think of the right wording, but like impermeable to harm impenetrable, a fortress, says Holy Spirit. It will get to the point where you are not easily hurt and you are not easily frightened. For I bring my word to your, mi your mind quickly as a reassurance of all things good 
and as a reassurance that all good, all things turn out for good. He's showing me a headscarf. He says, For you are pure and you are might alight. He's telling me that you are one of the remnant, you're one of the chosen few. And I think I've said this to you before, but um, he's told me repeatedly in other prophetic voices that the remnant numbers 144,000. Um, so he's adamant that we have reached a milestone as a global population. I'm bringing you into abundance, but the manifestation won't be evident in the short term but know that I will provide for you and I am stepping in I'm interceding on your behalf I'm in the throne room of heaven representing advocating for you and I will be bringing my requests before the throne in this hour so sweet child, hold your hands out and be ready because I am doing this good deed on your behalf and to bring abundant blessings into your atmosphere. So I'll be bringing before you the sweet song of success and you will begin to see this manifest I feel like he's giving me a timeline of three to six months so you will begin to see it in the natural sweet girl sweet child I'm bringing these things into your life so that you can bless others abundantly and you will know at the right time who I've placed before you and who has needs that you can meet and you know that as you bless others, you in return will be blessed. So I'm bringing you inevitably along a timeline that I had set out previously. And nothing's going to change about that fact. I will be bringing you and your sister out of poverty, out of dereliction, because that's a mindset that my warriors can't have as they go into the future. But do know that the experiences of your past have set you up to be a saviour to others, to save souls and to go out and make manifest my light, to reach out to the downtrodden and downhearted and bring them up to the same level as my light. I'm going to change the tyres on life's vehicle so that you can navigate life's highways and byways with confidence and assuredness. He's showing me that I think he's referring to like the big mud mud tyres on a four-wheel drive and he says that they'll even out the bumps in the road for you. For I know that my children are delicate and I only give them so much as they can tolerate. And I give in kind. So where you have blessed others, where you have been a blessing to others, so too can I bring my kingdom warriors to bless you. And I can even bring those of the secular community who identify themselves as good people across your path to bless you abundantly. And it will be by seeing your light shine that these people will realise that a good thing is not a God thing and that perhaps they want to be just that little bit closer to God's shining light. 
On the 22nd of February, Anne wrote to me, I apologise for not getting back to you about your lovely writings from the Lord. It's been an adjustment settling into where we currently are and our grandfather passed away as well. God has had to sever us from our family as they didn't believe in, support the path we've been required to take. It's been very hard having to reach out to my grandmother, all to ultimately be rejected and treated poorly all over again. This is the same grandmother that we reached out to when we were living in our car and she refused to help and actually believed we were lying. It's honestly just so sad. We didn't even get to talk to our grandfather before he passed because she wouldn't answer our calls and allow us to speak with him. Unfortunately, my sister and I have quite poor reputations amongst our family and have suffered from various forms of witchcraft, slander and false accusations. We don't even speak to our parents as they are the ones who made us homeless last April or because we chose to obey God's will over theirs. It's been quite the tumultuous journey and quite lonely also. We've learnt many times that the Lord is truly the only one we can depend on. We still have no idea where we're going to end up after this and we only have about three weeks remaining. All I want is to stay in the Lord's perfect will and be guided by Him. This last instant was strange because God typically just brings a door to us, like with the elderly woman. This time we had to go out and find a place to stay ourselves instead of an opportunity just appearing. I'm not used to making such decisions as things typically just happen to us. I will say that the elderly woman did promise to put us up in an apartment for six months, but as she has yet to receive the remainder of her funds from the sale of the house, we are still waiting on that. Plus, now that she's so violently turned against us, I no longer know if that will even happen. With the dog and everything, we really need stability and a permanent place to stay. I truly pray God will open a door to a place soon, as well as a door for our careers, so we can start becoming financially independent, while still looking to God for all our needs and provision, of course. We're just tired and could really use a change in direction or just some clarity. I have no idea what is happening, but I'm trusting good news will arrive soon. Anyhow, I pray all is well with you, and I hope that explains why I haven't yet offered my thoughts on all the poems, songs. I'm still reading, and will definitely look to them as a source of encouragement. I'll be honest in saying we could use some right now. I replied, thanks for the update, Anne. No rush with the lyrics I sent you. They are all on this video I uploaded a few days back. It sounds like God is doing a new thing, sending you out to find the next thing. I'm sorry I was slow to reply. I've been flat chat this week doing paperwork to correct an error the government made. It will result in a big blessing financially. God's way of motivating me to tidy up my record keeping and uncovering various leaks in my finances. Today was all about my girls. I can certainly relate regarding family relationships. Of my whole family, I am only in touch with my twin. I have five siblings. This is biblical, this rifting. I'll pray and I'll listen. I do believe that we are about to go through tough times globally and all you are going through will give you an edge when the multitudes are shaking. God bless you. I pray you stay in touch. On the 28th of February, I checked in with Anne. How are you, sister? Holy Spirit says you are right where he wants you. Anne replied, Hello, Rachel. To be honest, I'm exhausted. It's been a long couple of days. To make a long story short, the woman I told you about, Tanya, is trying to block us from the blessings we believe God has for us. The elderly woman, Miss G, promised to pay us for helping her and to put us up in an apartment for six months. My sister and I never expected anything, but Miss G insisted on helping us. Even when she turned against us, she still wasn't willing to see us be homeless in our car. Tanya knows this because Miss G literally told her every day to make sure she takes care of us and puts us in a nice place. Honestly, I had bad feelings about Tanya early on. I believe God was warning me weeks ago not to trust her and just be cautious. My sister and I ultimately saw her do some very illegal and dishonest things, which is not good because she is in charge of Miss G's money as her power of attorney. It's become very clear that Tanya had an ulterior motive and never really cared to help me and my sister or Miss G. In fact, Tanya told me on the phone several days ago, that she was only going to stay power of attorney until she received her cheque and then she was going to abandon Miss G and leave it up to the state to decide what to do with her. On top of that, I tried mentioning apartments to Tanya and her reaction was less than pleasant. She lied and came up with all sorts of excuses as to why she no longer felt comfortable putting us up somewhere. She felt that she could get in trouble with the law but again, that's nothing but an excuse because we've seen her do things that actually are illegal. It truly was Miss G's wish that we get put up. Everyone knew it as well. Miss G told her friends and family that she was going to do for what she was going to do for us and no one objected. Miss G has a very famous brother. He's 
in a popular band and my sister has spoken to him a few times. He's always been very kind to us and he was actually going to inquire about our living arrangements. He knows our story and about our journey with the Lord and he wasn't willing to see us be homeless either after all we've done for his sister. However, Tanya got on the phone with him about two weeks ago and pretended she was going to take good care of us and do the right thing. She told him we were her first priority and that she was going to find us an apartment since that was Miss G's promise to us. Well, fast forward to now and Tanya isn't even responding to our texts or phone calls. She's gone completely silent, hasn't paid us a dime and is ultimately lying to everyone. I haven't heard from her since Sunday and I'll be shocked if I ever hear from her again. It's honestly terrible because all we ever did was help her and I just never would have expected her to stab us in the back like this. I knew she was not to be trusted but I didn't imagine she'd stoop this low. Not only does she not want to get us into a place, she doesn't even want us to receive payment for all the work we did seven days a week. My sister and I don't know what to do besides pray. As you know we have only about two weeks left here and we still have the dog. Miss G's brother did say we could keep in touch, so we have made him aware of the situation. He's quite busy, but he did get back to us, and he's going to continue speaking with us later today. We just have to see how everything unfolds, but I trust that God will not allow us to be wronged, and he will come through for us in the end. I will definitely keep you posted, and I appreciate the encouragement. I pray all is well on your end. Much love, Anne. On the 29th of February, I heard from Anne again. Hello Rachel, like you told me last night, the Lord really does have us right where he wants us. Elise and I haven't had to do a thing because Tanya's own lies have condemned her. She texted us this morning with a huge lie which proves that she's been dishonest and hasn't wanted to take care of me and my sister from the start. The remainder of Miss G's funds from the sale of her home arrived on Wednesday and Tanya was meant to call us then to let us know so we could get paid finally. However, as you know, she remained silent. She told us this morning that Miss G's funds are frozen because Miss G is being sued by a close friend. We actually have been speaking to the friend in which she is referring. His name is Henry. He himself told us this is a lie because just last night, Tanya called Henry to pay him since he was owed money from Miss G as well. Just like we suspected, Tanya simply never wanted to pay me and my sister or put us in an apartment. She was telling fibs the entire time and now instead of owing... Owning up to not wanting to pay us, she's blaming Henry and a non-existent lawsuit instead. This is all the proof we need to corroborate our innocence. I know God is handling it and we will be provided for in the end. Just thought I'd keep you in the loop. Anne. I replied, Hallelujah. I said, I pray the victory in your lives and destiny. Amen. Holy Spirit says he is working this situation for your good. Amen. Also, God gave me Exodus 6 just before I noticed your email. I will record it today for a video as it applies to many. Anne replied, thank you Rachel, just an update. We have yet to hear anything new on our end, however we did find out that Tanya happened to be telling the truth about the elderly lady, Miss G's funds being frozen. It truly was a shock, considering we were told that Miss G's friend, Henry, had already been paid by Tanya the night before this all happened. Turns out, Tanya just lied to Henry to get information from him, because because he actually is suing Miss G now. Things have gotten really ugly and there's basically zero chances that Emma and I will be paid. We did talk to Miss G's brother about this, but we haven't heard back from him in a few days. Like I said, he's a musician and very busy, so I don't know if he'll be willing to step in and help. He knows we have less than two weeks to leave our current place, haven't received any money from his sister and still have her dog. We're currently trying to figure out whether God intends for us to keep the dog or if he wills for the dog to be adopted. There is a kind lady helping us figure out all the adoption stuff currently. I mean, I'm willing to keep the dog, it's just I have no clue where me and my sister are about to end up, plus I don't know if God's going to have us working for someone again. We were so busy with Miss G, and should the Lord have us go help someone else, and we're working long, crazy hours, I'd rather the dog be with someone who can spend the day with him and take him outside to play. I just want him to be in a warm, happy family. He's such a sweet old dog. But anyway, I trust something will change for my sister and I in the days to come. We've been in this situation before and God always shows up at the last minute. It's definitely an adventure. I have no idea where we'll be in two weeks or with whom. All I know is God will guide us and he'll provide for us too. As always, I pray you are well and I look forward to hearing from you when you get the time. Much love, Anne. I replied, I will pray and I'll try to listen, although I'm getting busier and busier. Don't discount what you believe God has told you. Anne wrote to me on the 12th of March. Hey Rachel, how are you? I just wanted to let you know my sister and I were finally paid yesterday. 
Thanks to God, that part of the battle is over. Tanya, the elderly woman's power of attorney, also agreed to follow through and put us up in an apartment and gave us a budget to work with. We are already going to, to our places tomorrow. However, it is still very much a fight because just one day later, Tanya is back to ignoring all our phone calls and texts. We literally need her to communicate with us in order to get into a place, and she honestly just makes things much more challenging. I know this is all a reflection of battles being brought, fought in the spirit. It's evident the devil and his minions don't want to see us put up and are trying to delay us even further. My sister and I are fasting and we'll continue to pray that Tanya will get back to us speedily and that all will go smoothly. Also, I'm not sure if I told you, but the dog has been adopted into a new loving home. The woman who adopted him is kindly, allowing us to stay with her until we move into our apartment, so praise God. Also, there is another woman who has kindly offered to pass mine and Emma's resumes around as she is close friends with people in the entertainment industry. I don't know whether or not God will open a door or if that's his plan, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I pray all is well with you and yours. I reply, this is good news and God is really looking out for you girls. We really have reached a season of blessing. He has you right where he needs you to be. Thank you for the update. I'll pray for you. And today, Anne wrote to me again. I pray, I pray you and your family are well and safe. I also hope you've been able to find time to rest. My sister and I are doing wonderful and God has protected us in the midst of all the chaos in our country right now. We're not afraid and in fact this is oddly turning out to be the greatest time for us in spite of everything else going on in the world right now. We recently found out we were approved for an apartment, which honestly is a bona fide miracle. As you know, we are not currently employed, and I'm not even sure what our credit scores may be, but we've found favour nevertheless. We should be moving in on April 1st. God has seriously blown us away. The apartment space is newly renovated and has everything we were looking for. It's in Beverly Hills, one of the best areas in this city, and we truly couldn't have imagined any of this happening. God also had Tanya wire us the money to cover our rent for six months. It was a fight, but the Lord connected us to a lawyer who wrote a letter on our behalf for free. The letter finally made Tanya respond to us, and a few days later the money was in our accounts. This has been such a crazy but blessed time. Thank you for all your prayers. I can't wait to tell you of all the other great things to come. God gets all the credit. None of this would have happened without him. So many times it looked like the absolute end for me and my sister, but God always showed up. Thank you, Rachel, so much for listening to us and reaching out in times of trouble. I'm glad that our story may be used to uplift others. I would also like to note that around this exact time last year, we were about to be made homeless in our car. We went from living in a beautiful high-rise apartment in downtown Los Angeles to a Starbucks parking lot right by my university. I didn't get to graduate with the rest of my class and life looked hopeless. Now, a year later, God is reversing the plans of the enemy and restoring what we lost. He is so faithful. I hope to hear from you soon. Anne. If you've listened through this testimony and you're wondering where your blessings are, if you have been sensitive to God's leading and obedient to God, you can fully expect to be stepping into this season of blessing any time now. If you are listening to this video and this is all news to you and you're not sure even perhaps if God exists or how to listen to God, how to follow his leading, I direct you to my channel where you will find videos. For example, a video I listed recently was how to hear from God. And I also suggest that you be go back through this video and click on some of the videos that I've linked throughout this video because they will lead you to channels that can help you develop your own work walk sorry your own walk with God if you're only just starting to be led by Holy Spirit if you're new to this faith walk then it's important that you understand that believing in God doesn't automatically make life work out perfectly we understand that God is there to provide for us and if we can follow his guiding and be obedient he does take care of our needs it's not an automatic path to riches we each have our own path we're here on purpose with our own assignments and our own path to walk and Holy Spirit is there to guide us and keep us on that path and we can go through life with more comfort and more peace when we stay with stay on that narrow path than if we're disobedient to God's will 
and wander off that path. If you are just starting your walk with God, then you can expect that God is likely to separate out people who are not serving your purpose and stuff that is not serving your purpose, mindsets that are not serving your purpose. So there can be a bit of discomfort when you're starting out with your walk with Christ as all those things that are no longer serving you are stripped away. But I hope that having listened to this testimony, you can hold out with ever-increasing faith that out the other side you will step into abundant blessing. I pray that this video blesses you. Have a beautiful day. God bless. Holy Father, I thank you for placing this video before those you intend to receive it. Financial support is welcome and donations can be made by selecting the link in the details box below this video.